Nika actively engages in high-level discussions on topics that connect technology, social change, youth entrepreneurship, and education. Please welcome to Connecting for Change, Kanika Gupta. Thank you, Callum. Thank you. So I didn't get the memo. This is my first time in New England. And I didn't hear about Sandy or the hurricane, as you can tell by this wardrobe. So let's hope I survive. <laughs> so thank you so much. And thank you to the Marion Institute for bringing me here today. I am delighted to be sharing with you my story of Sojo and some of the lessons we learned along the way of how to take ideas into action. Social change is not easy. We all know this, which is why we're all here today. I'm excited to share with you a little bit our, about our roller coaster, what it took to take this idea of Sojo into life. My name is Kanika Gupta. I am the founder and chief catalyst of Sojo, which is an online resource that helps people take their ideas for social change into action. The idea of Sojo was inspired from my personal experiences both in the social change sector as well as academic research. For my master's thesis, I went across the country of Canada, which is where I'm from, and examined youth social innovators. I wanted to better understand what did it take for someone who was inspired to do good and had a brilliant idea to actually achieve the impact that they desired. Out of this research came a lot of very valuable insights, most of which inspired the creation and development of what we now know as Sojo. The first was that we live in a world of tremendous resources. We have more people than ever before who are more creative, more educated, and more connected, and arguably more caring. We are more aware of social issues more so than ever before. The challenge is, is all of these resources and good intentions are not translating into the action and the social impact that our world needs, as evidenced by everyone here in this room today still talking about the same issues. So what I found in my research was that there was no starting point. There's a lot of people with really good intentions and brilliant ideas. The problem is, if you don't know where to start, how are you going to get started on this journey? We have so much support out there for us. A tremendous amount of resources and knowledge and intelligence that lives in the universe. But it's so fragmented. So if you don't know where to go to for help, if you don't know what questions to ask, what happens is we spend mindless hours behind the computer screen trying to find answers to these questions, but in reality, we get more overwhelmed than when we first began. I also found that there's no platform for shared intelligence. So rather than learning from the mistakes of people before us, or their lessons learned, or a lot of what Martian was speaking about earlier of making knowledge more open and accessible, we're essentially reinventing the same wheels. Rather than collaborating and building up our solutions and ideas with people who have already been through this, we're all doing this in our own silos and building this out on our own. So all of these insights inspired what is now Sojo. Sojo's original name was Social Journal. And the spirit behind that is social is all about people and community. And a journal is where you share your ideas. A journal is a very safe space to write your ideas and to brainstorm and to talk about your thoughts. But with Social Journal, what we wanted was to create a space that was safe and welcoming to encourage people to take their ideas out of the journal into real life, which is also why I'm super thrilled to be here today. This conference is all about connecting for change, and Sojo picks up where this conference leaves off. We want to help you go out into the world and make the phenomenal change that you desire through giving you the knowledge, the tools, and the resources needed to take action. Just as Martian alluded to, collaboration and innovation go hand in hand. And with an increasingly complex world, we need to come up with more and more creative and innovative solutions. 
As such, collaboration was built into Sojo's DNA. If we were going to build something that brings together all of the knowledge and resources and content that already exists, we needed to collaborate with other people who were already in the sector. So when I first began uh, in the early stages of Sojo, what I did is I spoke with other organizations that were doing a similar thing, training and developing entrepreneurs and youth social entrepreneurs. And when I shared them this vision of Sojo being that go-to resource, so we physically republish content from experts from books, working with different publishers to put all their information in the same place, the first thing everyone told me is that this will never work. No one will ever give you access to work with their content without any money because content is very proprietary. If you put their information on your website, that's going to take away from their website. And web traffic is a big way in which people define success these days online. So I was extremely discouraged of having so many people tell me, no, this was not going to work, especially considering these were supposed to be the people who were supposed to help me. They were mandated to help entrepreneurs get started. And I had this brilliant big idea, and I felt like no one quite understood it. I'm sure many of you have a lot of passion and a lot of energy that you just put out there and share your ideas. Who here in the room feels like they've stared at blank faces before? <laughs> Almost everyone, right? People look at you like they're confused or they think that you're absolutely crazy. But you know what? Instead of getting angry and frustrated, I channel that negative energy into positive energy. So that's me in, in the top corner, and I use that as my conviction. If someone told me no, I would show them why something like this was needed. Because when you believe so strongly in your vision, that's the most important thing to getting started. And you know what? Collaboration is not easy. It is much easier just to go out there and do something on your own. But to get someone to think of the bigger picture, to think beyond the immediate term, it's not easy. It's just a lot of hard work. So through knocking on doors and through approaching hundreds and hundreds of experts in the fields and publishers and dealing with intellectual property lawyers, we managed to get on board a handful of content contributors. So this is just a sampling of some. Sojo works with over 40 content contributors and experts in the space. And I can say with full confidence that to date, a year and a half later, we host the most comprehensive collection of informational resources and tools on the how-to of getting started. Over 750 pieces of content. Thank you. <laughs> So what I've also learned along this journey is that your passion is very contagious. In the early days of all the people that told me this would never work, there were just as many people who were excited to get on board. And what I've now learned in hindsight is at the beginning I used to approach people with expectations. I would expect them to understand what I was doing. I would expect them to understand the vision or the importance of this. And I would expect them to collaborate with me because in my mind, it just made sense. And then there's all these other people, you know, in everyday conversations or when you're going to events, you know nothing about them or their background and you have no expectations. You just focus on being yourself, sharing your passion, sharing your energy and focus on excellence, just doing what you want to have to do. And it's those people that have surprised me the most. It is those people who have bent over backwards, who have believed in the vision, but more so just were excited about this because they saw how excited I was about this. And to date, those have been our greatest and biggest supporters. So when you drop expectations and focus on just being yourself, you'll be amazed at all the people that will come and rattle their support behind you. Another way in which Sojo collaborated is we co-built our first product with our users. We had the courage to launch at a conference in front of a thousand people where we released a half-developed site. This site was put together with no money, without a technical team, and it wasn't a very pretty site. But we realized if we were supposed to build a product that the world needed, it needed to be truly responsive to its end users. 
So by encouraging feedback, by putting something out there and truly embracing imperfection because we just didn't have the time or the resources to build something perfect, it allowed us to put something out there in the public space, encourage people to give us their feedback and create the tool that we now have, which is incredibly effective, but this is just the beginning. Through every process of Sojo's journey and our evolution, we will continue to get feedback and co-create our products with our end users. So in line with collaboration, I've also learned that there really is no substitute to hard work. I, I'm kind of pre preaching to the converted here because everyone here knows the value of hard work. And it's just, it's just necessary in this journey of making something new happen. In the early days of Sojo, it was an incredible amount of hustle and an incredible amount of heavy lifting. We started this idea with no money and no technical team. Prior to starting Sojo, this is the first time I'm actually saying this in public, um, I was someone that never actually used the internet <laughs> at all. I'm serious. To me, the internet was my email account and maybe the random Google search to try to find things. The first blog I ever read is the one that I'm writing right now. It was not on social media, and that was a whole fo new foreign world to me. But with no money and, and an end goal in sight, which was to build this site in time for this conference we wanted to launch at, I taught myself how to program, something that I'm very proud of, which allowed us to build out this first site together. Thank you. I can't talk about hard work without mentioning our incredible team. So up until recently, Sojo was built exclusively with a team of part-time unpaid staff because, again, we had no money, and this was for a year and a half. So in order to accommodate a team like this, Sojo was built with a virtual team. In 2012, it is so easy to be able to collaborate virtually and accommodate to part-time schedules. And that's what we did, and the team's been incredibly phenomenal to bring Sojo to what it is now. Who here gardens? A lot of people, which is great. Imagine your neighbor has a beautiful garden. I know the storm will probably wipe out what's left of the flowers right now, or imagine a month ago, this beautiful garden with tons of flowers. And you look at their beautiful flowers and you decide to chop them off, take the stems, and plant them in your pot of soil. What's going to happen to those flowers? They're going to die. Uh, the same thing goes to creating social change. It's all about nurturing your own seed and embracing the process to see how the plant is going to grow. I can't tell you how many times throughout this journey I've compared myself to other people. And the internet's really easy. You just look at another site and say, oh my gosh, this is so beautiful. They've only been around for two months and they put together such a pretty site. Now I'm fundraising and I'm looking at other projects and I tell myself, well, what are they doing? How do they have so much money? And why am I finding it so difficult to find money? The list goes on of all the people we tend to compare ourselves to and do the exact same thing. We want to take off their flowers and just put it in our garden. What I've learned is you, you have no idea what your flower is going to look like. And when you see the seed, even the packages lie most of the time. And the flowers look very different than the pictures. But that's OK. That's the beauty of this journey, of going through that process, better developing yourself, having a better appreciation for the world around you, and just being extremely grateful for all the people that come along with the journey. So that's what I want to leave you with. There really is no substitute to hard work. And you can look at everyone around you, but at the end of the day, you're only working with yourself. So focus is a word we hear a lot of. <laughs> oh. Thank you. I will be wrapping up shortly. Focus is a word we hear a lot of. And I can't uh, tell you how important the word focus is. <laughs> I 
Would you like to join me on stage? <laughs> okay. <laughs> when I look at that roller coaster, you will always be in points of lulls. And over the last year and a half, when I look at all the lulls that I was in, I can consistently point to the fact that I lost focus. Because when I lost focus, I felt stretched. I felt like I was doing too many things at once and felt just incredibly overwhelmed. Focus happens in twofold. There's focus on the bigger goal and the bigger vision of what you're trying to achieve, but then there's focus on those everyday milestones. And what are your immediate goals? What do you want to do this month? What do you want to do this quarter? How Sojo focused in the bigger picture is we focused on being the knowledge hub. Our mandate is to take ide help people take their ideas for social change into action. This is a huge mandate. That means a lot of different things. And we were told by a lot of different people to do a lot of different things. Host offline events, connect people to mentors and money, and the list went on. But what I realized is no one focused exclusively on content and doing content really well. So this is what Sojo was going to focus on. And by focusing on content and staying clear of the noise around us, that allowed us, with very little resources, to put together this phenomenal platform, which has now given us the foundation to build and grow from there. What I've also learned is that burnout really, really, really sucks. <laughs> In the past 12 months, who here has burnt out? Come on, don't be embarrassed. <laughs> well, for those of you who didn't put your hand up, I really hope you don't get there because we're not doing anyone any service. So yesterday on the train ride up, I was reading an article. And in this article, I saw the definition of sustainability, which I found quite interesting. And this definition was, sustainability is the possibility that humans and other life will flourish on Earth forever. And when we're burning out, I don't know how much we're flourishing. I've been fortunate enough to, to live, travel, and work across the world in many developing countries across multiple continents. Thankfully, knock on wood, I never got majorly sick. So for as long as I can remember, I'm one of those people that gets sick once a year. I'll get the flu, I'll go home to my mom, and I'll be in bed for, for a week, and I get better and get on with my day. Over the last 12 months, I was in bed. I was bedridden sick four times. It takes no rocket scientist, and my mom will be very proud that I'm saying this on stage, because she's been telling me this all along, that there's a correlation between my health and well-being and the work that I'm putting on with Sojo. When we're so focused on our passion, and it's that passion that guides us, it is so easy to forget about ourselves. So we are all here living and breathing sustainability because we all truly believe in creating a better world and we're excited about the privilege to be able to build a world that we want to live in. It is really, really, really important that each one of us as individuals flourish through this process. So through collaboration, through hard work, and through a lot of focus, I've learned that it's possible to get very far with, with actually very little, with very little money and just a lot of dedication. This is the site Sojo has online right now. I will be hosting a workshop later this afternoon where I'd love for you to come. I'll walk you through the resource and guide you through some of the common barriers to taking ideas into action in the very early stages. Uh, we're endorsed by a UNESCO body and have been incredibly fortunate about getting a lot of press coverage in a very short amount of time. So I want to leave this with you today. And this is something that I've learned over the last year. This is our organization's mission statement. This is the Sojo Manifesto, and these are our series of values and guiding principles that help guide us through our journey of building Sojo. It's what connects our team together, and it's what we hope will connect our user base to us, to remind you that 
on this wild journey, when you feel like you're the craziest person in this world, that you're really, you're not alone. So I'm gonna leave this with you, and thank you so much for your time. It was such a privilege to share my story with you today, and I truly hope Sojo can help you along your journeys of building the world that you desire. Thank you. <laughs>